Hey, in this video, we're going to talk about what is a mining pool in crypto, how important are they, and how does a mining pool work to begin with. Mining pools are like another chapter in the book of crypto mining. In one of my earlier videos, I explained what crypto mining is as such. Now, having discussed that, we can move on and venture into more complex topics, such as what is a mining pool, how to set up a mining pool, or simply how to join a mining pool that's already out there. Mining pools are subject to fierce debates. On the one hand, they are a natural result of the constantly intensifying competition in the crypto mining industry. On the other hand, certain crypto mining pools have become so huge that some consider them a threat to decentralization that's supposed to be almost synonymous with DeFi. Welcome to Crypto Finally Explained, the most crypto-friendly educational YouTube channel for actually learning crypto. Here, I finally explain crypto topics using simple animations, visual doodles, and real-life examples. So no matter if you're 5 or 75, you'll be able to understand it. In this video, we're going to take a deeper look into the theory and practice of crypto mining pools and answer the questions of what is a mining pool, how to set up a mining pool, and why are they so important. Let's dive into it. So, just like with many things in life, crypto mining is something that can be done in different ways. It's like going out for lunch. You can go alone or you can go together with your coworkers. You'll see what I mean in a minute. But before we get into specifics, let's speed run the definition of what is crypto mining. So, cryptocurrency mining is an inseparable process of many important blockchains, such as the Bitcoin network, as it ensures the network's efficiency and security. It consists of validating and verifying transactions that take place on the blockchain and adding them to the blockchain's public ledger. Crypto miners use specialized hardware and software to solve complex mathematical problems, known as hashes, that secure the network. They receive rewards for doing so. I've made an entire video about this subject, so if you feel like learning more about it, be sure to check it out. And, as I've already mentioned, crypto miners can venture into this adventure alone, or they can join a crypto miner collective, which is also known as a crypto mining pool. Let's define the difference between these two approaches. First of all, let's talk about individual mining, which is also known as solo mining. Let's rely on a very simple real-life example. Imagine going on a beach with a metal detector. You may go on exploring and eventually stumble upon a lost watch, some coins, or similar stuff. But, as it has happened before to some lucky people, you may find a long-lost buried Roman treasure, waiting for some random metal detector hobbyist to unearth it. Here's the catch. You found it on your own. It's yours. You invested into the necessary gear, you found the time, and you went for it. That's an investment. And, as a result, whatever you find will be yours. Founders keepers, after all. The same applies to individual mining. It involves a single miner investing in using their own resources in this activity and therefore reaping the fruit of their labor for themselves. These resources are your own money, the required mining hardware and software, computing power, electricity, and, of course, time. Individual miners run their mining equipment independently and, as a result, receive the full rewards. Of course, this happens only in cases when they are the ones to successfully mine a new block and receive the block reward. But, as the industry grew, mining became a rather competitive concept. This resulted in individual mining becoming expensive, risky, and not that profitable anymore, as it used to be. Of course, this is only true when talking about mining such coins as Bitcoin. There are other coins that rely on mining as well, and mining them remains less risky and more profitable, even to this day. That being said, receiving the block reward for mining a new coin is way more valuable and profitable when the block reward is literally newly mined Bitcoin. Therefore, many miners choose collaboration instead of confrontation. As the saying goes, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. Therefore, many individual crypto miners decided to combine their powers, which significantly increased their chances of successfully finding the hash, mining a new block, and receiving the reward. They form, or join, a mining pool. The downside of this is simple. The reward will be shared among those who together constitute the mining pool. But the logic here is obvious. Even though rewards will have to be shared, the chances of receiving them are higher. Therefore, you may receive less, but this should happen more often. So, mining pools are the opposite of solo mining. It's literally just collective mining. Let's get back to the previously mentioned metal detector analogy. Imagine going out to search for hidden treasure on some random beach, but this time you're going with a friend. However, there's a minor yet important detail. Your friend lends you one of his metal detectors, since you don't have one of your own. So, you go out, the stars align in your favor, and you find a lost yet still running Rolex watch that's worth at least $20,000. Even though you may be the one who found it, it's a result of collective activity. And you're most definitely sharing the profit that comes from selling the Rolex. If it wasn't for your friend who gave you the necessary equipment, you probably wouldn't have found the watch. So, in its dry, technical definition, collective mining involves multiple miners combining their computational powers and other resources to significantly increase their chances of successfully mining new blocks and receiving rewards. 
The rewards are distributed among the participants based on their contributions, since different crypto mining pool participants contribute an equal amounts of resources. But as it's usually the case with anything crypto related, things always get more complex. Distributing miners' rewards is no easy task. Therefore, it's important to take a look at the architectural principles that are integrated into different kinds of mining pools. In order for a mining pool to run smoothly and for the distributional mechanism to make no mistakes, mining pools must rely on certain organizational principles. Therefore, the question of how to set up a mining pool is technical and complex and requires a deep understanding of this technology. In addition to the technological aspect, the organizational one is also of paramount importance. Mining pools rely on coordinators who oversee the sophisticated block reward distribution process. Most mining pools apply one of the following reward distribution methods. The first one is called PPS, which stands for pay per share, while the other one is pay per last in shares, or PPLNS in short. The PPS method is a reward distribution model where miners receive a fixed payout each share they contribute to the mining pool, regardless of whether the share ultimately leads to finding the right hash, which would lead to block creation. This share refers to the individual miner's contribution to the mining effort. In this case, you can view this method as rewarding the employee of a company with a regular salary. The obvious pro of this method is the stability of the income that miners receive. Often, you'd see that many prominent pools use the PPS plus reward distribution method. It means that the whole distribution process is the same, but is just a little bit enhanced. Such reward systems incorporate transaction fees into the reward calculation. These fees come from blocks that miners contribute to. The pay per last in shares method, on the other hand, takes a different approach. In PPLNS mining pools, miners get rewarded every time the mining pool succeeds at creating a new block. In such cases, they get rewarded according to the number of shares that miners contributed to this process. The N in PPLNS stands for this number. So, essentially, in PPLNS, miners who contribute more get more rewards. So, by now, we laid out the theoretical background behind what is a mining pool. Let's take a look at some real-life examples and how to join a mining pool in general. Among some of the world's biggest mining pools are such names as Foundry USA, Antpool, F2Pool, and Binance Pool. These giant pools control a lot of the computational power, and as a result, they have a lot of influence over the network. For example, Slush Pool has over 200,000 registered users and mines several different cryptocurrencies. And if you take a look at Antpool, you can see that this mining pool offers both reward distribution methods to their users, be it PPS Plus or PPLNS. It depends on the person's preferences and financial situation. So the options are not strictly limited. Now, the answer to the question of how to join a mining pool is rather intuitive. After setting up a crypto mining rig, a person has to check whether their hardware is compatible with the mining algorithm used by a particular mining pool. Then everything goes the usual way. To put it simply, it consists of creating an account, connecting to the pool, setting up a crypto wallet, monitoring the process, setting up a payout method, and ultimately withdrawing your earnings. Of course, this is an oversimplification of the entire process. If you want to learn how to join a mining pool in detail, let me know in the comment section below the video. I might make a dedicated video on the topic. Finally, there is one more aspect of this topic that requires addressing. It's the difference between the two seemingly similar yet different concepts. I'm talking about mining pools and mining farms. They refer to two different things, therefore it's important not to confuse them. By now, the question of what is a mining pool is something that I've already answered. But to put it in the shortest possible way, it's combined computational power in an effort to increase the chances of earning block rewards. Now, a mining farm refers not to the fact of a collective mining effort, but to the physical location of where a large number of mining rigs are located. It can be huge, yet set up by a solo miner. Similarly, a single crypto mining pool can consist of many crypto farms that would be all collectively trying to fetch that block reward. All right, we've reached the end of the video. Crypto mining pools are a deep subject, and hopefully I've answered many questions that may have bothered you. Do you have any mining experience of your own? Or maybe you're participating in a mining pool yourself. Share your experiences, plans, or any doubts that you may have about this subject in the comments section below. If you find value in videos like this, be sure to press those like and subscribe buttons. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Till then.